right, so about five years before I had my mental breakdown at Starbucks over the Boulder Police not leaving me alone when I hurt my back, the cruelty that came from them, my older brother got kicked out of Starbucks because he stunk. <laughs> Well, actually, he went in and used the bathroom right after somebody who really stunk took a bath in there. I didn't stick up for my brother. I probably should have. But at the time, I was thinking of Ashley with the crooked face. Before I tell you the story of Ashley with the crooked face, I'm going to tell you a story about Francis Henry Stevens III. He used to hang out with a woman named Samantha. Samantha was very pretty. And she wore glasses, and her glasses really helped to enhance her beauty, believe it or not. They're just wonderful people in this world. People who just can't help themselves. Um, one of these people is Amber Derry. She just can't help it. She's just a good person. Um, she was my little brother's biggest crush in high school. I thought she was really nice. She was also very pretty. That's why my brother liked her. Because she was pretty. If she was mean, my little brother still would have liked her because she was pretty. Jamie's pretty like that too. But Jamie isn't nice like Amber is. Jamie is... Well, she paints a pretty picture. She knows how to manipulate men based on what they want. Sam, she... She's similar to Jamie, but she's also... very twisted. There was a, a pub next to Old Chicago's in Boulder, Colorado. And there was a man who used to go there often. And he was a, a burn victim. His face was terribly scarred from it. And Sam, she was scared of him because he was ugly. One night Sam was out there, she was, she was just having a good time. But she saw this man with his burnt face drinking there, and he was outside and he was just having a conversation is all. He didn't even start the conversation, two young college girls walked up and were talking to him and Sam started screaming he's a child molester he's a child molester he looks like a child molester get away from him he's a child molester and I was trying to figure out what it is that she was doing what she was up to well, Francis Henry Stevens III hears this, and he wants to go start a fight with this guy who's horribly scarred, and I was wondering what was going on. I said, who, who did he molest? Sam said, well, look at him. He looks like a child molester. 
He couldn't get laid if he wanted to. He couldn't get laid if he had to pay for it. No one would have sex with him. The guy just wanted to be left alone, but Francis was going to beat him up because of what Sam said. So, I stood up to get in between them to talk some sense into them, and I was trying to talk sense into Sam, letting her know that she needs to tell Francis not to fight this guy, because this guy wasn't looking for trouble. Well, there's a guy who worked at the pub there, and he was very large, lifted weights, and he was going to he was going to pummel the hell out of Francis Henry Stevens III. Francis believed what Sam had to say, but didn't bother to find out why she was saying it. She was saying it because she didn't like him because he wasn't physically attractive. The guy was just minding his own business. He wasn't there to start trouble or molest children. It was nighttime. It was a bar. It's not like he was at a grade school. And it's not like he had actually done something wrong. He just didn't look pretty. Well, that almost got Sam. Well, it almost got Francis, rather, beaten piss limber by a man three times his size. This dude was huge. But Francis left. And every time I saw Sam after that, or Samantha, I made fun of her for wearing glasses. Called her four eyes. Told her she couldn't even pay a guy enough to have sex with her unless he was blind. I was mean to her. So, Ashley with the crooked face. She was pretty nice to me. She did have a very crooked face, though. It was lopsided. She was pretty despite the fact that her face was extremely lopsided. But she was a meddler who liked to twist and contort things and start trouble with people that didn't want any trouble, much like Sam had done. Ashley wasn't pretty like Sam, and she was also a lot meaner than Sam, and she decided that she liked me because I was nice to everybody, but one day she brought her meanness into Starbucks towards some homeless people that didn't deserve the punishment that she brought them. And, uh, so I was mean to her. I told her she needed to go away, and I started calling her Ashley with the crooked face. Or just crooked face. Well, my older brother was hanging out there at the Starbucks at the time, and this woman, I wanted her to go away because she was destroying the tranquility that we had created. We, as a homeless community, had worked together for... For a long time, picking up the trash around there and sharing tidings of goodwill. Well, Ashley, she, she was a heroin addict, and I didn't know that at the time. I didn't find that out until my older brother told me. See, before Rabbit got kicked out of Starbucks... Ashley decided that she wanted to manipulate him to get back at me. Because basically what Rabbit says goes at the time. He was master of Pearl Street, I suppose you'd say. He kept the peace. He regulated those who were child molesters or rapists so that they would leave but Ashley with the crooked face manipulated him to basically throw it in my face that she didn't have to leave because she was with my older brother.
So, because of her meanness, and because I had explained to my older brother what was going on, he didn't care. And she continued to be mean to people. When he got kicked out of Starbucks, I didn't say anything. I miss Rabbit so much. He did a lot of really mean things to me growing up. But he also... I remember in California there was a girl named Lisa Johnberg. And, uh... She didn't like my older brother. She... Smacked him in the face with a pipe and put a big divot in his cheek and attacked him with a bike chain and sent some other kids after him just because she didn't like how he looked. And I remember on my birthday when we were in California, I was probably about 13, a couple of the guys that Lisa Johnberg had sent after my brother, they were coming after me and they just wouldn't leave me alone and my older brother just wanted me to leave the park and I I didn't want to it was my birthday but these two guys they didn't care one of them kind of looked like Tito Ortiz <laughs> just real scrawny and the other one was uh, a bit shorter than him with some dark hair and my brother just wanted me to leave. And I, I wouldn't leave. So they grabbed his glasses and they broke them and they threw them down on the ground. And they were just sunglasses, you know, the round John Lennon glasses. And they hit him a couple of times. He didn't bow down or anything. And we were finally allowed to leave because an older guy came up. He pulled over. He saw what was going on. And and it was my birthday, you know. I just, I just wanted to be left alone. And they were hitting my brother. And he took it. And when they left, we, we went home. We rode our bikes to school, and I remember I was following Eric, and he uh, he stopped real quick, and my bike ran into the back of his, and it bent the back rim, and I remember he carried the bike all the way back to our home. It was an apartment building. And, uh, my dad was pretty pissed off about that bike. It had apparently been an expensive bike 20 years earlier. Fuck, this thing was older than dirt. My dad smacked him around a little bit. Refused to let him get another bike. Refused to let him get another tire, so... Eric had to walk to school every day after that, and I got to ride my bike, but I, I stayed close to him because I was afraid of Lisa Johnberg's friends catching me without my older brother. He protected me from the bad people. He was never there, you know? I mean, we got to live in California for a few months. And that was, like, the longest I ever got to live with family. Ever. And... He 
used to protect people. That's what he did. That's what we both did. For a whole year before Natalie came into my life, everything was falling apart. The cops wouldn't leave me alone. My back was screwed up. Everybody threw me away because I couldn't do things for them like I used to. And my older brother was strung out on meth. Natalie saved me from that. Natalie was my best friend for a reason. You guys can kiss my ass. <laughs>